the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus answered, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but it's from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I, live, I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. The man whose name is in the title of our church, Martin Luther, once famously said that if you want to know who someone's God is, ask them what they trust. Pay attention to what people trust, he said, because whatever we trust is our God. Whatever we trust is our God. This provocative or challenging statement challenges us to think about our relationship with this word, trust. Who and what do we trust? And how have the events of our lives shaped us? Have, have we become people who trust easily? Or is trust something that is difficult for us? I can recall my earliest memory, or I believe the first time that I heard this word, trust, and what it meant. I was about 10 years old, and my dad took me from the safe confines of our suburb to the north side of Chicago for a baseball game. And we parked in a paid, fenced-in parking lot. And I remember my surprise and concern after the game when we walked back to our car and found that the attendants had abandoned the lot, our car was unlocked and the keys in the ignition. This was apparently just how this lot operated. And I said to my dad, Dad, anyone could have just walked in here and, and taken our car. And my dad probably should have responded by saying that actually our car had the best anti-theft device possible because the car in question was a rusted station wagon, a Ford Taurus with rear-facing seats that was only going to be leaving this lot with us driving it. <laughs> but instead, my, my father turned this into a teaching moment, and he touched my shoulder and said, Dan, there's a lot of trust in the world. He said, there's a lot of trust in the world. And I took from these words that he had noticed that even by this young age, I had become skeptical of whether I could trust. And my dad knew that I was going to need to learn to negotiate and survive in a world where trust is hard to give. I was going to need to be wise in learning who I could trust. To survive in a scary world, we need to trust, and we need to trust the right people. This morning in our gospel reading, Jesus gives his disciples a lesson in trust. He senses a, some of that similar vulnerability, perhaps, that my father sensed in me. And Jesus wants to teach his disciples who they can trust. 
Jesus is speaking to them in a part of his gospel which is known as the, his farewell discourse towards the end of his life. He knows that his, he's about to be killed and depart and that his disciples are soon going to doubt whether they can trust him, doubt whether this is a world of trust. And so Jesus is trying to prepare his disciples the way a father might prepare a son. And so he listened to his words with, their, with his disciples, desperate and curious to know where we might find a place of trust in this world. And so we do, as Jesus' disciples do, what we always do when we're trying to figure out whether someone is worthy of our trust. We pay attention and listen evaluate their behavior to figure out whether we can trust them. We are in mindful of this contrast between those who are or are not worthy of our trust. And Jesus seems to want his disciples to be discerning and to make these contrasts as they evaluate people. And Jesus draws a contrast between him and what he describes as the world. Jesus says, I do not give to you as the world gives. And so we wonder, what, it, what does the world give to us? What is the trust that the world might offer? As Martin Luther seemed to be challenging us to think about, what are some other gods that we might be trusted to, uh, tempted to trust in? False gods that offer false promises. For some of us, these false gods may be our possessions or a house or a safe neighborhood that we think will give us a trust, trusting life. We may trust in our status or our next promotion at work. We may trust in medicine, a relationship, or some new technological gadget that is going to distract us and we think satisfy us. None of these, I think, are, are bad things, and they may even be good or be blessings from God. But we wonder whether they will really satisfy us, whether they will be lasting or that we can trust in them. Jesus seems to anticipate that his disciples will put their trust in the wrong things, and he warns them that they will often find that the things that they trust will leave them, he says, troubled or afraid. And Jesus does not want this to, this to be their life. Do not let your hearts be troubled, he says, and do not be afraid. And so we look to Jesus and his life and his words for a path to trust. Jesus shows up this morning and shows us that we can trust and shows us what it means to truly trust in the right things. Because even as Jesus is saying goodbye to his disciples, even as Jesus is walking into his own death, Jesus trusts in the right person, namely in God. Jesus trusts in the one person who will never forsake him, who will never leave him alone. And Jesus is constantly pointing away from himself to God who sustains him in his moment when he wonders whether he can trust. Jesus talks about how God will love him and will help make his home with him. Jesus describes how the words that he speaks are not even his own words, but that the Father has given them. Jesus describes the trust that he has in God that even enables Jesus to rejoice in this difficult moment in his life because he is going to the Father, because the Father is greater than him. Armed with this powerful trust, Jesus says that he is even able to rejoice in this difficult moment, this moment when it seems difficult to trust. He can rejoice, Jesus says, because although he is going away, he is coming to us. Not only does Jesus tell us that we can trust in God, Jesus tells us that he is going to send us a helper who will help us trust. This helper, Jesus says, is called the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, 
who even after Jesus is gone will remind us forever that we can trust, that we can trust in God. Jesus shows us how we can trust. This morning, we become these people who have the Holy Spirit, who can trust properly. In our baptisms, we received this Spirit which enables us to trust in God. And we can become people who trust properly. And we can become people who look at good examples in our church, in our world, of people who trust in God. This morning, in our first reading from the book of Acts, we meet just one of those people who shows us how to trust and does amazing things because he trusts in God. We meet a man named Paul. Paul has, earlier in his life, like many of us, placed his trust in all the wrong people and all the wrong things. Paul, in his previous life, has trusted in himself. He's trusted in violence to subdue his enemies. But his life is changed when he meets Jesus on a road and he receives the Holy Spirit and is baptized. And now Paul is living entirely through trust. And so when Paul has a vision and hears a voice telling him to take a risk and go to Macedonia, he does not hesitate, but immediately goes. Paul embarks on a journey of trust, a dangerous journey through cities called Troas, Samothrace, Neapolis, and Philippi. He does so without, it appears, having researched whether these are safe cities or researched whether he is likely to be welcomed there. But because Paul trusts God and because the Holy Spirit goes with him, Paul's trust is rewarded. He meets a woman named Lydia who has been waiting for someone like Paul someone like Paul who can show her that there is a trustworthy world. Lydia listens to Paul's journey of trust, and Lydia learns that she too can trust in God. Lydia is baptized, and Lydia and Paul begin a friendship that is only possible with a Holy Spirit that enables trust. Lydia takes the risk of inviting Paul into her home, and Paul, who has just met her, accepts the invitation because she knows that with God, Paul and Lydia live in a world where trust is possible. This morning, we can be with the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that Paul and Lydia have. We can be people like them. We can take the risk of trusting God and one another because Jesus has shown us how. As this season of Easter nears a close and Jesus prepares to depart, we need to have no fear and no doubt, but rather trust. Jesus does not give us a trust as the world gives, but a trust that God gives. With the Holy Spirit, we can say that, yes, there is a lot of trust in the world, and we can trust in Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.